you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank God for Evangelist Beverly and Sister Cloman who have come with me on this trip. We are, we are grateful. Amen. They don't let me. Uh, there's always somebody with me. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but there's always somebody with me. And uh, I'm learning to appreciate it and uh, to be grateful uh, for what the Lord is doing. I'm interested in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 16. Matthew chapter number 16. And I'm going to interview verses 17, 18, and 19. And uh, I guess we'll identify with uh, St. John. Uh, chapter number one, verses one through five. Now, if it's easier for you, you can meet me in Matthew 16, beginning at verse 17. I'll quote John uh, one and one through five, and then I'll meet you there. John, in many theological circles, is deemed to be the invisible writer. He is not like Matthew, Mark, and Luke who exploit a lot of themselves. But in the theological circumference, if you read John, you would notice that John, in his writings, he's never really visible. And Jesus is never really invisible. And so he is separated from the gospel writers because his intent is to reveal Jesus Christ. And so he says in St. John chapter number 1, verses 1 through 5, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And that life became the light of man. And that light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. I would like to visit verse 14 where it says, And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us full of grace and truth. In St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 16, there is a conflict and it's psychological, the conflict is with, it's with Jesus because he's concerned about what people think. And now they tell me I shouldn't be bothered by people's opinions and what people say shouldn't affect me but even Jesus was bothered and he was affected because his time is short and he asked his disciples the question whom do men say that I the son of man am and of course they responded well they're saying that you are Jeremiah, Elias, John the Baptist it was an insult because they deemed him to be a reincarnated individual. They mistook his identity for the identity of somebody else and that is a problem. When people don't know you after all you have done. He's bothered by those opinions, he's bothered by uh, those conversations. And so he says, uh, enough of that, enough of that. Uh, whom do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? And Peter, of course, responds, thou art the Christ, the Son of a living God. 
And Jesus feels real good about that. He feels real good because now he says, Blessed art thou, Simon Bojona. <laughs> uh, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. Verse number 17. Uh, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, as sure as your name is Peter, you know your name. You're not confused with your name. So he says, as sure as your name is Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And so Jesus seems to focus on the gates, plural, of hell. And his intent is to position the disciples in a way that hell is surrounded. I want you to look at somebody and tell them we have hell surrounded. Uh, tell somebody else hell won't prevail. Now, it is always a psychological battle to walk with God. It is always a battle within the mental parameters of my physical self. And I think sometimes the anxiety is because we are physical people living in a material world trying to maintain a relationship with a spiritual God. It's always psychological because I am touching a God that I can't touch. I am watching a God that I cannot see. And saying to myself consistently, that he is with me even though I have never seen him. It is not the conflict of Christianity, it is the conflict of the individual person. To be able to maintain relationship and find within the lab, the heart, the audacity to walk with God. You want to give yourself some credit. Because you are walking with a God. That you have not seen. And you are defending uh, the principles of scripture. You are defending the name of Christ. Because you have moved into a realm of faith. That has made you biased to anti-Christian perspective because I know God for myself I'm not interested in what anybody else has to say it is a faith that is given and it is given to us by God and we have to admit that God is definitely who he says he is because all of us who occupies this uh, architectural monstrosity we believe God because of God's deposit if that is the case uh, it would be impossible for any of us to say that we don't have faith because God according to scripture has given every man a measure of faith. When you deal with uh, the word measure from its etymological root, it means uh, one yard. And the Greek calls it uh, the metron, the metron, and it says that 
it's it's actually one yard so everybody here has at least one yard of faith and uh, that's that's wonderful to know because if i have faith as the grain of a mustard seed i can move mountains now if i can move mountains with faith as a grain of a mustard seed imagine what i can do with one yard of faith it is deposited into the the not the nephish the soul it's it's deposited into the individual outside of time and it's deposited because god is all knowing he's all knowing and the enemy uh, dates that you and i do not understand the uh, auspiciousness as it relates to the omnipresence the omniscience of god he dates that we will not dig into god's knowledge and god knows all things and so faith is deposited as a response to the rebellion that is going to happen in the garden of eden he, he puts it in place because he is god uh, he is omniscient he he knows all things he he is overwhelming in his intellectual capacity he is amazing in his ability to calculate and to dominate because he is god so everything that he does he does outside of time because he understands that conflict is going to arise and the individual who cannot see him touch him taste him smell him will need him so he puts things in place to make sure that despite the negative that those who believe in him will come out and come out all right uh, yes he he puts it in place you uh, you you can't lose because god has gone before you and he has made the crooked pathway straight he has called your in at your beginning he's god and because he's god i can relax i've got to learn how to relax because he's god if he saved me then what can the devil do if he chose me then how can the devil win because god does not waste time choosing individuals that don't have destiny as a matter of fact when god chooses you he does not choose you to lose you but he chooses you to use you uh -huh. the choice is made and the choice is made outside of time it's made outside of time and that choice indemnifies that the hand of God is on an individual's life now the conflict has to be introduced because God has come into the world and, and and that's who Jesus is he is the incarnation of God he is God in the flesh uh, which now beckons the question why is he here he's here because there was a conflict uh, in the heavens and this is where sin starts it starts in the heavens uh, the conflict is there is an angel who at that time named Lucifer uh, wanted to exalt his kingdom above God's kingdom. 
which is really idiotical. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy because uh, he didn't have a kingdom to exalt in the first place. It all belonged to God. Uh, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. It's all God's. It's all God's. Uh, however, he is very crafty. He's very crafty. And uh, he's very manipulative. He's uh, very seductive. Oh, Lucifer. He is, uh, he's a master at giving you permanent expectation uh, for things that are really temporary. He's, he's a master at deceiving you and uh, confusing you. He's a, he's a master at making you feel good and bad at the same time. You cannot disregard him. He, he's a worthy adversary. Uh, the most unclean, you know. He, uh, the Lord of flies. He's Beelzebub, the, uh, the hoofed beast with the horns and the face of a bull he is full of jargon and philosophy etymological opinion and influence he's very intelligent he knows how to woo you psychologically he, he studies the individual and he deems himself as one who has the capacity and the facility to control the world you cannot underestimate Lucifer because he is very calculative. He, he calculates everything that he does. Uh -huh. What he does today is really not about today. It's about 10 years down the road. And so he sets up the works. He has a strategy. He has a plan. He has a philosophy. And it is put in place to devour. It's put in place to conquer. It's put in place to kill, to steal, and destroy. He will dress himself as an angel of light to the believer. And he will dress himself as an angry lion to the sinner. <laughs> oh yes, he's, he's a master at moving through the world and uh, spitting on the universe. He's a master at blaspheming God, using logic and using information associated to religious perspective to move the believer out of the will of God. He deceived uh, one million angels. Uh -huh. And if he can deceive some angels, he, uh, he can definitely deceive us. He deceived one million angels and convinced them to rebel against God. Uh, he enlightened them and uh, he led them to see the strength of their own agenda. He's Lucifer, meaning son of morning, one of the first angels. And uh, his name literally means the angel who guarded the chambers of God. Uh, he's a cherubim, which means he's a warrior. He knows how to do battle. He, he is fearless. He's angry. Uh, he's plotful. He's, he's enthusiastic. Uh, can I talk about him? Can I? He's manipulative. And he's able to deceive the nations and to deceive the world. His plot now is to become God. And so in order to become God, he has to overthrow God. But in order to overthrow God, there has to be battle. 
so he deceives a third of the angels and uh, they move into heaven and there's conflict and heaven is a beautiful city the Bible talks about the streets paved with gold it talks about the welcome tables and the mansions and the stones of every kind it talks about uh, the splendor of that place but according to scripture Lucifer and the angels who rebelled they totally destroyed the heavens they destroyed the heavens which put God in the place where he made the declaration that there would be a new earth and a new heaven because of the conflict and uh, the intensity of battle he's one of the oldest angels he stood in the midst of the fire and he saw God bring life into oblivion he saw God make everything out of nothing he was there and he ascertained wisdom because he was that close to God he's not a seraphim but he's a cherubim the seraphims are the closest to God they uh, they hear directly from God but the cherubims uh, every once in a while get a message and they go on an assignment but uh, he's not just a cherubim but he's an anointed cherubim which means he knows how to deal with church folks uh -huh. he knows how to deal with believers uh, can I take it just a little farther because of his rebellion he is cast out of heaven into the earth and the scripture says immediately he went to make war with the seed of the woman and it's actually translated seed in the woman because the woman does not produce seed she can only house seed she is the result of man's masculinity before there is femininity there is masculinity because every man came out of some woman but the first woman came out of a man Oh yes, oh yes. Is, uh -huh. Is it, he's, he's cast out of the earth. Uh, he's cast out of the heavens into the earth. And immediately he went to make war with the seed of the woman. And, and seed of the woman it, it literally means generations you see he's calculative what he does today is about next year it's uh, he, he really didn't want Eve he he really didn't want Adam he he wanted their seed uh, he wanted the generations and so uh, what he did is he met Eve and you know the story and and Eve shares with Adam and it's a total uh, misappropriation it's a debacle uh, because the woman is out of place which brings the man out of place uh, because according to the scripture the man was not made for the woman but the woman was made for the man however the woman has power over her head which means she can influence him <laughs> and Satan understood this so he said if, if I want Adam I just all I need to do is get Eve uh, I, I ain't gonna deal with Adam then let him do what he's doing let me let me just get her and if I can get her uh, then ultimately I can get him so so he gets Eve and Eve gets Adam and when he gets Adam Adam gets Cain and when he gets Cain Cain gets the generations uh -huh. touch your neighbor say all he needs is just one of us to tear the church up all he needs is just one of us to break the heart of the pastor all he needs he's calculative he's he's calculative you all sit down 
his, his desire is to rule the nation. I want you to see who he is. The Bible says we have a worthy adversary. And I'm, I'm going across the Jordan, I promise. I, I, I got a lecture just a little. Uh, he's after the generation. So what he does is once he gets into the earth according to Revelation uh, chapter number 12 he immediately goes after the seed of the woman and he comes down having great wrath and so the Bible warns us woe be unto the inhabitants of the earth and the sea that's a, a sea kingdom that's a whole nother teaching he, uh, he's, he's focused now on the earth now the earth is the domain that God has given to man and it's important that you understand that there are classifications of angels there are angels who left and then there were the angels who were cast out now you and I call them fallen angels but they're really not fallen angels uh, the only reason he fell is because God threw him like a rock and you saw him fall like lightning but he really didn't fall he was cast out so the first category of angels are the cast out angels and Satan is the leader of that particular posse and then you have the angels who were so interested in femininity that they left their own estate went down into the earth and they show up in Genesis chapter number 6 they laid with the virgins and gave birth to the Nephilim now the Nephilim were true enemies of Adam's stock they hated God's man they hated the children of God and so they went on a rampage to wipe them out God said this isn't going to happen so he sends a flood and it rains for 40 days and 40 nights why because God needed the waters to be deep enough to drown giants when the giants died when they drowned according to etymological pertaining to scripture uh, the giants were soulless beings and they were soulless beings because they were not the product of God they were the product of the angels that sinned against God uh -huh. so they had a body and they had a spirit but they had no soul no nefash they were not made in the image and the likeness of God uh, the Hebrew called them Titans and it described them as large to oversized beings some of them had uh, one eye and uh, some of them had uh, six toes and uh, four arms they were beasts they were not the product of God well when they drowned uh, their bodies died but their spirits remained alive and so now I don't just have wicked angels but now I have demonic spirits because a spirit is disembodied a spirit that at one time had a body can I talk to you like I talk to my friends some of y'all looking at me deep but you might as well punch a ticket and ride this train cause we gonna have some church in here tonight lift up your hands Hands. shout hallelujah and so now I have angels who have turned against God but for the first time I see the reality of a disembodied spirit which is the definition of a demon and now demons are moving in the world now the angels that sinned against God and laid with the women the Bible says God 
them into chains of everlasting darkness and bound them until the day of judgment uh, they're not here uh, they're put away but Lucifer has been allowed a season and the angels that are enthusiastic to his rebellion are allowed uh, to uh, walk with him <laughs> Ooh, I don't know uh, do I have the time uh, if you want me to preach say preach apostle preach thank you for permission I will he is in the earth but he wants to exalt his kingdom above God's kingdom so what he does is he perverts man and he deceives man and he then crowns himself as the God of the earth which scripture records the God of this world after he takes over the earth he moves into the first level of heaven which the Hebrew calls the firmament which you and I know as the air or the sky the Hebrew word Shemaya meaning something spread out the air kingdom he goes into the air kingdom and wages war with the angels who defend the air and in his mind he overtakes them and he crowns himself as the prince of the powers of the air he then moves into the second heaven and the Bible calls the second heaven the solar system uh, that's the second heaven it is the place where a line of demarcation is drawn between air and uh, oxygen uh, and between gravity you, uh, gravity uh, doesn't cross into that particular plane in the solar system it is the place where God has housed all of the planets <laughs> and so literally he claims all of the planets uh, Mercury Venus and uh, the Earth Mars Jupiter Saturn Uranus Neptune and of course uh, uh, Pluto <laughs> He, he claims these planets as if they are his planets and he sets up a base of operation on every planet to be able to conflict with communication between God and man now he stops at the second heaven which is the solar system and the reason he stops is because Paul define to us the third heaven uh, that's God's domain uh, that's God's territory Paul said I was caught up into the third heaven now the scripture calls it the literal planet where God dwells it is in line with the northern hemisphere of the Sun uh -huh. uh, touch your neighbor say even the planets are preaching the gospel in order in order to get to God, you got to go through. I feel the ramifications. I, I feel it coming. It, it's God's territory. And so what Satan did is he descended upon mankind. And he claimed every territory after his dissension. Now God has to look at man. And the quality of God is to be just and to be righteous well God you cannot be just and you cannot be righteous if you allow the devil to deceive me because he's mad at you you see the conflict that I was pulled into was between God and the devil and because Satan had a temper tantrum and he lost he pulled you and I into the middle of a conflict that was between him and God now I'm messed up 
no, no, I don't know. You see, some of you really don't know God. And that's why you use scare tactics to get people to get their lives together. Baby, God has a responsibility to bring us out because Satan pulled us in and you think I'm going to pull hair out of my head because I got a struggle or because I made a mistake if God be for me I feel it here lift up your hands shout hallelujah God now has to become responsible which means there has to be a second dissension now Satan descended first but Jesus will descend second because if there's anybody that can deal with Satan it's Jesus if there's anybody who knows how to handle his calculative ability it's Jesus Christ I need some help here let me give me some help get on your knees right here and face this way I want you to come stand right here now what Satan does is he manages the flesh because of the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak are oh, you hearing me hold up this hand and I want you to grab this hand now this is the homo sapien the human being now Satan has him like a puppet pulling his strings and Satan thinks that he is in control but Jesus has Satan like a puppet pulling his strings so now Satan thought he made him go to the club but it was Jesus who made Satan make him go to the club so somebody else would get delivered by his testimony touch your neighbor say neighbor everything I went through when I came back to the house God got glory thank you that's good uh, so uh, Satan has me like a puppet incognizant of the fact that God has him like a puppet and he made me go this way so he thought uh, but it was God I'm just gonna ask you to shake your neighbor's hand uh, four times today uh, shake it for the fourth to the last time and say the situation I'm in it was God the money I have it was God the tears I cried it was God hallelujah hold it there lift up your voice shout hallelujah God now he sends his son it's, it's the second dissension because Satan uh, did not play by the rules and God says alright since you won't play by the rules then I'm not going to play by the rules you want to get dirty I'll get dirty oh you you took the angels and they laid with the virgins and gave birth to Nephilim but my Holy Spirit is gonna come upon a woman and give birth to somebody bigger than the giants somebody bigger than the demons somebody bigger than the fallen angels and somebody bigger than you I feel y'all sit down I'm gonna blow a fuse lift up your voice shout hallelujah as there is a second dissension and so Jesus he has uh, why you're not sitting down uh, he has to descend oh God help me here he descends from the third heaven into the second 
to heaven and in his dissension in order to get to the earth he has to pass by mercury which is 3,000 miles in diameter and it revolves nearest to the sun in a 36 million mile orbit and it does it in 88 days he had to pass by Venus which is 7600 miles in diameter and it revolves around the Sun in 67 million 200 thousand days in orbit actually 225 days and then there is the earth 7927 as mileage is just just in width and and it's the third nearest to the Sun and of course its orbit is 92 million nine hundred thousand and it does that in 365 days uh -huh, one year now Jesus has to descend he has to descend past Mercury and Venus uh, one writer wrote and he said that if Jesus would have stopped at Venus it would have been a saner world had he stopped at Mercury it would have been a fasting moving world and by Mars and the other planets he was not seen and Jupiter had no men that needed to be redeemed so he stopped at the earth uh -huh. because somebody there needed redemption and so Jesus descends he descends outside of time and the dissension outside of time it moves differently from dissension inside of time you see while Adam and Eve were sinning Jesus had already descended uh, that's why the Bible says he called the hen at the beginning so where is Jesus he's in the lowings of Adam he's in the generation that Satan was after and so when Cain and Abel were born all right Satan you got him uh -huh. when Lamech was born uh, just give him two women you got him uh -huh. when Enos was born uh, just give him a psychic you got him uh -huh. and then you got Noah and then you got Abraham and then you got Isaac and then you got Jacob and then you got Judah and then you got David but out of the loins of David there's a root and an offspring by the name of Jesus Christ he was in the lowings of Adam in the garden of Eve yeah and so he bypasses moves to the genealogical line rushes through a man by the name of Boaz transfers through a woman by the name of Ruth Boaz is the good Ruth is the bad Boaz is in the direct line of the Messiah but Ruth represents a world that's crazy so God puts righteousness and unrighteousness together because when Jesus comes he has to know how to deal with both the righteous and the unrighteous for we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity I got three more shake your neighbor's hands I need to borrow an extra one shake it for the fourth to the last time and say Jesus can deal with my mess he can deal with my weakness I don't know if I should preach it all today I feel the Holy Ghost lift up your hands shout hallelujah bless the name of the Lord and so now Jesus is moving through the genealogical line and it's time for here for him to come God needs to make the announcement so God sends Gabriel 
and Gabriel walks up to a woman by the name of Mary and says blessed art thou among women for the Holy Ghost hi, yeah, yeah, will come upon you are you here with me and you gonna give birth to what's already been there now how did she conceive and not know it touch your neighbor say neighbor because he was already there yeah the Holy Ghost just woke him up he was the seed laying dormant until the right time can I say that again he was the seed laying dormant until the right time touch your neighbor say neighbor it's the right time victory shall be mine it's the right time lead me God or bless me with somebody else it's the right time fire me God or give me a better job it's the right time I feel it here hallelujah to God I gotta get out of here lift up your hands shout hallelujah he comes in to the world and his intent is to destroy the kingdom of darkness and to save the souls of mankind so now I find him talking to the disciples and he asks the question whom do men say that I the son of man am and the response was some say Jeremiah's some say Elias John the Baptist or one of the dead prophets and Jesus said man that's an insult whom do you say that I the son of man am Peter answered the question and said something in the spirit I just feel a shaking like like something's on me I feel an anointing coming down my way let me speak in this anointing he said thou art the Christ the son of a living God Jesus looked at Peter and said boy you ought to be proud of yourself he said just like your name is Peter and you know your name he says upon myself and upon the word of the Lord I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it I'm getting ready to close. Uh, lift up your hands. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory. When I looked at hell from its etymological roots, hell up to scripture is a place or a state in which the soul of the unsaved will suffer eternal damnation that's what the book says as it relates to Christendom and Christian philosophy now the Catholics misinterpret they were on the right place but they misinterpreted what the Lord was saying when you look at hell from his etymological roots there are three levels to hell and the three levels of hell were not created by Satan they were created by God because hell was created for the devil and for demons and the cast out angels I feel them preaching I feel it here shout hallelujah shout glory there are three levels to hell the first level is Gehenna and Gehenna literally means the grave I'll tell everybody that all of us are going to hell because all of us have to go to Gehenna which is the first level of hell now the Catholics took it and they called it purgatory they said it's a place where if you're really not that bad but if you're really not that good you can go there and you can pay for your sins and then be released 
to heaven. That's not so. But Gehenna is purgatory. It's the place where the spirit will rest until the Lord quickens the dead and the dead in Christ will be the first to learn. They'll be the first to get up. The second level of hell is Hades. It's the midsection. It's a place of mild torment like a hotel facility. It's got different rooms and in every room there's a different kind of torment but the torment wasn't made for man it was made for the devil the cast out angels the demonic spirits I gotta get out here somebody shout hallelujah the third level is torturous it's a place of everlasting darkness where God will bind them with chains and hold them there he said don't fear hell because hell will be cast into the lake of fire now what the devil tried to do is make hell his place of retaliation his place to haunt the generations of man and that's why Jesus said if you know who I am he said the gates of hell will not prevail I got to get out of here shake your neighbor's hand for the third to the last time and say name no weapon found against me shall be able to prosper shout hallelujah shout glory he defends the hells he puts out what Ephesians calls the archives the high ranking angels and demons who know more about us than we know about ourselves and they create strategies against us he deals with the principalities that's the high ranks that's the high ranks he uses them the Greek calls them archives and then the powers the Greek calls the exhaustions the soldiers the infantry he uses soldiers to mess up our minds to get in our dreams if he wants to pervert us he'll call Niobus which is the manager of dreams and Niobus will hire Incubus and succubus which are characters in the dream to pervert our minds and to pervert our thoughts and then the rulers of the darkness of this world the cosmos Kratophus they are not in the hills but they surround the hills the witches and the warlocks the soothsayers the wizards those who deal with voodoo who do in Kanye black magic playing with root magic with water magic with fire magic with metal magic with herbal magic you're not talking here they surround hell and then spiritual wickedness in high places the pneumaticus pomerias the angels of rank and authority and power like the prince of Persia that was able to lock Gabriel in prison until Michael came all of this arsenal is designed to defeat us but Jesus said to Peter if you tell me who I am can't no weapon I got to get out of here run to somebody and tell them no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper he said now that you know me he said I'm giving you the keys because I need you to go in the hell and take back 
what the devil stole since you know who I am I'll make you an apostle since you know who I am I'll make you a prophet since you know who I am I'll make you an evangelist since you know who I am I'll make you a teacher since you know who I am I'll make you a pastor I'll put the pastor on the left side of hell I'll put the prophet on the right side of hell I'll put the evangelist in front of hell I'll put the teacher behind hell and I'll put y'all not talking here I'll put the apostle on top of hell and then I'll put Jesus inside of hell shake your neighbor's head for the second to the last time and say neighbor we have hell surrounded you're anointed to deal with demons you're anointed to deal with the witch you're anointed to deal with the warlock you're anointed to deal with high blood pressure shake your neighbor's head for the last time and say we have we have hell surrounded let's work together let's pray together let's fast together let's cry together we have hell touch your neighbor say work with me pray with me cry with me fast with me we're better together I got to get out of here but run to your neighbor and say surround them say surround them surround every demon praying in the Holy Ghost surround every witch worshiping God surround every warlock giving God the praise Bishop preach until the devil understands that you are in charge prophesy until the devil understands that the anointing is on you come what may keep on preaching storms may rise winds may blow but open up your mouth and declare 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 the works of the Lord lift up your hands shout hallelujah shout hallelujah shout glory shout glory this is hell this is us we have hell surrounded watch out devil because here I come I'm coming with prayer I'm coming with an anointing I'm coming with power I'm coming consecrated I'm on my way I got the keys so I'm going in give me my child give me my money give me my house give me my healing give me my peace Lift up your hands. (laughs) 
He didn't give you He didn't give you keys for you not to go in. Let me say it again. He didn't give you keys for you not to go in. The only reason you're scared of the devil is because you don't know who he is. The reason Peter was not afraid of the devil is because he knew who his God was. If you are scared of the devil on the humble, you are ignorant to who God is. Listen, neighbor. Listen, neighbor. The only reason you're scared of the devil is because you really don't know who God is. In order to get the keys, you've got to know who he is. I don't know. I don't know. We have made God out to be someone he's really not. The church now only knows God as a killer. When there's so much more to who he is. In a father are the traits of so many different people. In a mother are the traits of so many different people. My oldest son Amos He's my son, but he's also my confidant. He's my son, but he's also my friend. You can't be friends with your children. Why? Jesus told his disciples, yo, we got a covenant. He says, from this day, I'm no longer going to call you servants. I'm going to call you friends. Friends are limited. As a pastor, people get upset with me because I ain't letting them be my friend. I got a right, just like you got a right, to choose who I want to be friends with. You're not saying nothing here. You mad at me because we ain't friends? I don't want you to be my friend. I don't like you like that. The pastor has the right to have in his circle who he wants to have in his circle. Why he's so, I, I'm, I know I'm probably messing up now. Why he's so close to them? Because that's who he wanted to be his friend. You pick your friends, right? Let the pastor pick his friend. Don't be mad because he didn't choose you. If you want a shot at the title, step in the ring. Greetings. This is Apostle Amos Harlan, and I want to welcome you to Living Oil. The world has no order, and reality did not exist. That's the little old conclusive God in the bush. When the wind did not know how to blow, and the grass did not know how to grow. Slave is horse.